sponsored by Slimeline, ACC Crappie Stick, Grizzly Jig Company, and Crappie Monster. Hey folks, it's Matt from 3 Pound Fishing and this is going to be different. So I'm going to save everybody some time. If you're not into deer hunting, if you're not into tracking a deer, in particular with a bloodhound, this is not your video. So hey, tune in next week. We'll do another episode with Crappie. That's what we do here on 3 Pound Fishing. But today we are tracking a deer and it was just quite the experience with a bloodhound and uh, just a great outcome. I always believe in you have to do 110% of what you can to retrieve your deer and this is what we do. We go the extra mile to make sure that we get our deer. So regardless, I appreciate everybody. Please share and I hope you enjoy the episode. This is going to be different. It's just a little another another part of who I am. I enjoy bow hunting for whitetail. So um, yeah, let's get to the episode. Thanks for watching everybody. All right, let me set the scene for you. At first light today, I saw a buck around 100 yards away from me and its nose was to the ground. Definitely saw a rack on top of it. It moves away from me. It's sitting in this little corner and I decided to go ahead and everything else I've been doing so far to get bucks has not been working. You know, grunting, rattling, nothing's been working. So I just go, Wah. you know, kind of like one of those cans. I didn't have one of those cans with me. So I just did it with my mouth. Sure enough, I'm looking through my binoculars at it and it goes straight for me at 100 yards. It's walking towards me. Now, granted, pick out my pins. Eyesight's going a little bad, I guess. I see this body coming right down my lane and it's walking towards me with its nose on the ground. Sure enough, I draw back and I thump it. Now, I don't know exactly where I thumped it, but it made about a 180 turn, ran back to the location I originally saw it then ran up my property for about 100 yards, did another 360, and then darted towards the woods, which was another 100 yards. So all said and done, he probably ran about 200, 250 yards into the woods. But when I heard him hit in the woods, I heard him take a big crash. So my assumption is he's on the ground in the woods, but this is the video of us tracking this deer. All right, so we just came up on the last spot I had him at. Here's the arrow, there's my knock. You can see my knock down here. There you go. Looks like it's getting a little dim. But here's your arrow. So we've got solid blood up to this point right here. Looks like we got blood all the way up here. Holy mackerel, there's blood all the way up here. So, and we've got a broken, looks like half the arrow is still in them keep that and then I'm just looking around this is probably about after a hundred yards of running and I'm just looking for signs of blood okay big blood right there right there right there yeah squirting big Here's this big turn. He messed this all up here. Look at that leaf just demolished with blood. So, yeah, pretty good sign. I'm excited. I mean, it felt good. We're going to find out if that's the truth. All right, so we're going to pick up the blood trail because I know he ran this way. He got to where my arrow was at. And we know he ran straight out this way. This is where he's picked up at. So up to this point, we're getting a good blood trail. We're excited. We're expecting this deer to be on the other side of these woods. Right there. So this year I decided that I was really gonna hold off. Come a barreling around this corner right here. And I heard him take a big old crash. This is the first time I've seen him. So it's either gonna be really disappointing or you'll see the video. When I'm tracking a deer, I'm, I'm looking for blood, obviously, but I'm also looking for fresh fr footprints. And something tells me these fr footprints go this way. All right, we've been looking for the. I've been looking for the deer now for 30 minutes, I guess, and all of a sudden the blood trail has gone down to really nothing, which is a big surprise. We just come up across the. Uh, part of the arrow that was in the deer so I'm wondering if that's going to do anything for us. 
That's been inside the deer and that's been kicked out. I don't know, it's kind of frustrating. So obviously at this point you can tell that I'm very frustrated. I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just really surprised and taken back because I knew I hit this deer so good and I just knew it crashed in the woods. And now here we are on a blood trail that's gone down to virtually nothing. And um, I can tell you this, one of the things that I think is the most important thing is that you do put 110% effort into finding your buck, your, your deer, whatever you've shot. You've, you've got to do whatever you can to retrieve that animal. And I was bound to determine, I didn't care that I, you know, I was going to find this deer and do everything I possibly could in my power to find this deer. And um, I was in my mind at this point realizing that was probably going to be the case. I really put a, I mean, if anything, I think I might have missed it high, but I've been seeing a lot of squirting blood, so I understand that's probably something from, has to do with the lungs. We've got our broadhead now, and uh, maybe we'll see the, if the blood trail gets better. Hey, so I've looked for this deer now for two hours, and I've decided to call in the bloodhound. I've got a buddy called out, his name is Austin, and he's gonna be here with his bloodhound, and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go after this deer and hopefully come up with some luck here. You know, basically up to this point, it's been about 700 yards and the blood trail has gone down to basically a speck, which it just completely surprises me when you've got arrow that, you know, 12 inches of arrow that is dripping in blood. Um, another four inches. Yeah, so a total of 16 inches penetrated this deer. 12 inches of it stayed in the deer for roughly 400, 300 yards, and this deer has gone down to a speck of uh, of blood. So after about 700 yards, so I don't know. I've I've heard that if you hit high in the chest area, that's the uh, no go area, and that's definitely probably where I hit it. But I just can't imagine this deer being able to make it. So we're gonna wait for Austin and introduce you to the dog, and we're gonna be tracking this deer. All right, folks, get ready to meet Kinky. Now it's not be what you're thinking. Kinky's actually because it has a kink in its tail, and you'll see that here in a little bit. Fantastic dog, and I just, I love that. That was the first time I ever tried this, and I said, why not? One of the things that Austin wanted me to do was to lead Kinky to basically where the best blood was so that we could start the process. So we did not go to the point in which I found to be the last speck of blood. We actually went to kind of the beginning and we got to watch Kinky follow that trail all the way to the last point, which was pretty cool. So past that last point, which of course were just very small specks of blood, Kinky led us right to the, the edge of the pond in front of my house. I took a gander out into the pond, sure enough, there's my deer floating in the water. First time ever one of my deers have made it into the water and it was amazing. So I got the waders out and we head out on the tractor. So what's the name of your guide service, Austin? Uh, end of the Trail Track Deer Services. Okay. And what's the phone number they can reach you at? It is 571-1724 uh, uh, and area code 618. Check them out, folks. Definitely got the job done. Good girl. <laughs> Well, there you have it, folks. We got the deer. The most important thing ever is to retrieve your deer. Do 100% of whatever you can to retrieve your deer. And we got to meet Kinky, Austin. Great guy, fantastic dog. Um, check these guys out. They're legit. And I'll tell you, I will do it again 
10 times over, if I ever lose my blood trail, I will always utilize a bloodhound service. I think it's so important. And uh, hey, thanks for watching the video today. I know it's totally different than what we normally do, but guess what? We're back to fishing. So here we go, folks.